Alrighty, well, morning, morning, good morning, everybody, and I'm once again from my cast, and um, let me go ahead and start by saying uh, there's going to be a fair amount of moving parts on this one, so just <clears throat> just get ready for some mistakes to be made. Um, and the music, this is going to be side quest. Uh, I was just in kind of a hurry to, to pick something that uh, just decided to go with this. Um, I think this just came out yesterday. It's called Side Quest. Their self-titled album and more dungeon synth, or I should say, uh, Dungeons and Dragons synth. Okay, so let's get started. Um, well, to start with, I watched part of the um. Uh, Kind of like yesterday, and or the day before, I watched um, I watched the Frosty Fostings. Um, it's a it's a fighting game tournament, <clears throat> or and it's a it's a national one too, so it's not it's not regional, it's not a local. So, but um, I, in case I didn't mention this a few days ago, I think I did, but uh, what of was actually Wind Jammers too. Which I thought was pretty impressive, because Witchhammers 2 hadn't even been out a month. And it's already part of a national tournament. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Especially, especially considering how much I like the game. Although, to be fair, or to be fair, I'm starting to burn out on it. Just, it just, um, I'm pretty much have, I'm pretty much mangling my controller now. Because the game can get pretty intense at times, plus, uh, the online matchmaking isn't that great. It's basically round robin. Like um, it's just the only two options you have is either ranked or unranked. And then if you choose ranked, just all the skill levels just get piled together. So there's often uh, there's often skill mismatches. Like uh, there's been times where I'll play and I'll I'll my opponent. I swear to God, he's like brand spanking new. Has no idea of what he's doing. Alright, I gotta turn it down a bit from my end. Okay. You know, so it's either I I grossly outmatched the guy, or I've had uh, opponents where it was the tables are turned. It was like the other way around. They totally dominate me. It's like I can't do anything against them. So, but there's hardly any, uh, there's hardly any consistency. So I think that's probably another reason why I'm probably going to be playing it less. You know, but, uh, but like I said a few moments ago, um, it's pretty great that Windjammers 2 is actually part of a national tournament right out of the gate. Usually, um, I think the way these games find their way to to the high-tier tournaments like EVO I, is the same way uh, It's the same way uh, players. It's, it, it has the same... Games have the same path that players do. Like, they start, you know... You know, they start playing in the local tournaments and then eventually if they're skilled enough they'll they'll do the regionals and then you know if they I guess if they do get within within the top eight then they move up to nationals and so on and so forth um, I think uh, new games are meant to be like that too you know usually they start out like a local side tournament and if if more uh, if more if more players are into that game, then it then it goes then it gets played at a regional tournament, you know, so on and so forth. But no, not Windjammers. Again, it it hasn't even been out a month, but it, and it's already in the national tournament. That's pretty damn impressive. Ah, uh, but otherwise, after that, after that, I tried to. Uh, I actually uh, I watched some Guilty Gear Rev too. Um, they had a. They had a tournament for that game too, and um, I I only watched like the top eight, but already I was not into it at all. I mean, it I I'd probably say three or four of those players were playing uh, this character Elfelt. I'm guessing she's uh I don't I mean I don't know much about her. Um, like I said, I only uh. These days, I only really play one character, Jackal. But, uh, 
and I, and I, I'll dabble a little bit here and there with the other characters, but nothing real, nothing real serious. But I'm, but yeah, I, uh, it, it got to where, the moment I, the moment I saw a player pick Elf Elk, I just skip over it and go on to the next match. So it, so it just kind of, it kind of brought some, uh, got, it kind of brought some flashbacks to back in the 2010s when I was watching the uh, Street Fighter Evo tournaments. Yeah, it just, you know, where a lot of the players picked Vega, because I think he has like this, he has this one spammable, one spammable attack, and um. For the uninitiated, or let me uh, let me take a drink of some uh, Arizona green tea first. But I'm gonna. But Vega has this um, he has a spammable attack. It's what's called a cross-up attack. It's kind of hard to explain unless you've actually played like 2D fighters. Um. He, he, he attacks you he doesn't like attack you head on but nor does he try to attack you directly behind completely behind you instead he's basically trying to literally land on top of you so you don't know which direction to block forward or back it's called a cross-up attack but uh vega he was famous for this and he you could do this like over and over and over again and uh, your opponent can really do nothing against you but it, it got pretty bad. It got pretty bad because a lot of players were, you know. I mean, I get it's a tournament and all. You want to win, you know. You want to collect that prize money, but you know, as a spectator, it's not very much fun to watch. So I was doing this back in the, you know, you know, in these tournaments that I was watching. If I saw somebody pick Vega, you know, I just skipped over that match, watched the next one. You know, I just and it was a. It was a repeat if necessary until I found a match until I found a match that didn't have Vega in it. So, uh, but for this tournament, I pretty much did the same thing with Elfville because, like I said, I probably say three or four of those eight players, you know, in the top eight had Elfville. That so I took it to mean she is to rev to what Vega is to Street Fighter. Maybe not as bad. You know, because I'm, you know, because from the little I was watching of her, it wasn't like they were relying on just one single attack to defeat their opponents. I mean, they're still, they're still pretty much having to use a good chunk of her toolkit, if not all of her toolkit. But, you know, it just, seeing the same character in so many matches, it just, you know, again, as a spectator, it, it's just, I'm not in, I'm not into it at all. You know, I like, I like seeing tournaments that have a wide variety of different players wide variety of different characters um kind of like guilty gear strive i did try watching this tournament but i was already kind of petered out from all the uh, tournament watching i mean i did manage to see a few matches from our uh, rev 2 that didn't have elf belt in it so i mean but uh one a combination of me not really playing not really having played Guilty Gear Strive at all. I think I played a little bit of the of the uh, of the tutorial and that was it. So when the announcers are explaining when they're calling a match, I don't I don't really know what they're saying or I really don't know what they're talking about. Um, during the Rev 2 tournaments, I had a little I had an easier time understanding what they were saying because you know I play the game so. I have a better idea as to what they're talking about, but in Strive, like I said, I basically have no experience at all with this game, so I much of what they're saying go right goes right over my head. And not to mention, you know, on one thing, on one hand, it's a good thing that uh we're playing, you know, they're playing offline tournaments now, going back to the old school. You know, apparently, apparently they're not gonna let COVID. Despite that, it's the it's now the Omicron variant, and I think there is another variant on the way. I can't remember the name of it. They sh they might as well just call it instant death or something. But anyway, you know. So 
it's like they're not letting COVID, you know, beat them down. And they're, again, they're playing offline. They're playing side by side. Back to the way it used to be, just the way I like it. You know, two players that can see each other going up against each other with an audience that's behind them rooting them on. You know, this is probably one of the things that have got me into watching fighting games to begin with. Just that. Oh, and I do have to do something else here. Um, this album, it only lasts about 12 minutes, so I had to set it to loop mode. You know, so, but you know, again, it's, it's great that they're all getting out and they're actually meeting each other. But on the other hand, too, on the downside, they're all wearing masks. I mean, I'm, I'm most certainly not against it. But, you know, it's especially bad with the announcers. I mean, when I was listening to the announcers trying to call the action with a horse going on, I mean, they sound really muffled. It's really hard to really get into it. It's really hard to listen to them. Because, you know, their balls are covered, so they sound kind of muffled. It just it really started grinding on me. Eventually, I just ended up calling local and just going out to watch something else. So, yeah. yeah. I ended up tapping out to that. Um, but one thing I did do afterwards is, um, I got, I fired up some more Rev 2 and I started out watching some more of the story movie. And I think I'm approaching the end of it. Um, the main bad guy, or I should say the bad girl, Ariels, she's, uh, she's basically the, the crazed, humanity must be destroyed, <laughs> you know, you know, humanity is such filth, they must be eradicated, you know, that kind of thing, just, you know, the, what, the, uh, how, how, how can I put it? The the purge villain, I guess you can call it. You know, human. You know, mankind is unclean and they must be washed. You know, like you know, like she's Hitler and we're all a bunch of Jews and we have to be eradicated. That kind of thing. It's just basically it's the um it's the anime high fantasy equivalent of the fucked it up. I could have sworn I had it set up properly. There we go. Um, anyway, she's basically the uh, anime high fantasy equivalent of the uh, the hatred game. The hatred guy, if you ever seen that game before, kind of the same thing. Humanity is just a bunch of maggots and need to be need to be cleansed or this world must be purged and let's lock and load and let's go blow them away. That you know, that kind of thing. It it's one of the most uh, controversial games out there, but when I'm sitting here listening to this girl you know, go on and on about humanity is a weakness, you know, it's time to, it's time to, you know, time to wipe them out and start over, you know, that kind of thing. The, the game Hatred was the first thing that came to mind. So, I mean, I'm still going to keep watching the movie. I mean, and, because to be fair too, um, after I got halfway through the movie, 50%, I got a whole bunch of in-game currency. But um, the story wasn't over, so it was it, the fifty percent was basically the intermission, and I'm guessing the rest of the story was uh, part of another patch because the dialogue actually became more bearable. It became less uh less long winded, but I mean it's also the the story is reaching a crescendo. You know, it's uh, like like I said, you know, Ariel uh, shows her true colors, and you know she's now on a rampage, and she's gonna eradicate humankind, that kind of thing. So, like I said, the story is reaching a resolution, so there's more action, less talking. Um, the conversations are now more brief and to the point, and again, they're not they're not sounding like fucking John Galt and Atlas Shrugged. So. But yeah, but like like I said, like I said, I think um, I'm at a I'm guessing that I'm at a point in the story where it's from a new patch. So okay, 
So, but um, otherwise, that's that's that. Um, that's gonna conclude things. I pretty much said all the things that I wanted to say this morning. So, and 15 minutes. Um, this is my this is actually my target time, 15 minutes. But oftentimes it's almost never gonna be around there. Usually it's like way earlier, or it's gonna be way later. So, but this time around, like I said, basically right on time. But otherwise, hey, thanks for um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. Always do. And I should be able to do another one at least tomorrow morning. So, but until then, what's the right working? Anyway, um, but I'll take care, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.